Hello everyone. Uh, today I wanted to take a few minutes to talk a little more about real-time kinematics or RTK. Uh, the reason is that I've been working a lot lately on my GPS guided rover and you've probably seen the last few videos I put out on that. That rover depends on RTK in order to navigate around the roads. Now typically a GPS unit uh, without any additional corrections it's going to be able to do about maybe a meter or so of accuracy. But if you're driving around roads that are only uh, three or four meters wide, you need to have better accuracy than that when, when you consider all the other sources of error that may come from the way the vehicle operates and noise in the area and such. You really want to be able to just get it down to within a few centimeters uh, just so you can stay on course. And I've learned that through lots of trial and error out here. So that's why we set up uh, real-time kinematics. Now, specifically what real-time kinematics is, without going into too much detail, is you've got a regular GPS unit, uh, just like you would use when you're hiking or whatever. Not particularly accurate, but um, pretty common, pretty inexpensive. And that's gonna give you, like I said, your, your one to two meter accuracy. But what happens is when that signal's coming down to that regular GPS, it's got a lot of noise in it that it picks up through the atmosphere and just variations in the composition of the atmosphere. That needs to be corrected for. So when you set up a base station, what you're essentially doing is you're determining a, a known location that you can use as a reference point. So, and you can either do that by uh, uh, contacting a surveyor or, you know, there's other, other ways you can determine specific locations down to within less than an inch of accuracy and use that as a reference point. So the way this uh, RTK board is set up that I'm using, you might notice this is the same board that I have inside the vehicle, and they're, they are identical. The only difference is that that one's being used as a mobile rover unit, and this is being used at the base station. You set that up in the firmware when you, when you first initialize the system. So I set this up as my base station, and it has a procedure called surveying in, where it will sit there and collect data points from the satellites and do its best to determine its position right here on this post. And what happens is you end up with a distribution of not quite so accurate positions scattered all around this area, maybe about a 10, 12 foot radius. But because those variations are apparently a random distribution, you're gonna be able to basically take the average of them and get a much more accurate idea of where you're actually sitting and, th and that's how it works and the more time you let the unit sit there and survey in the more data points you collect the more accurate your base station position is and that translates to more accurate operation of your rover vehicle so that's how it works now what we're going to do now is I actually have to rebuild the unit that was here because I originally had this board just sitting in a little uh, plastic uh, like a laundry detergent container and it did a good enough job of protecting this from the weather over a few months but what happened was the uh, power supply was you know connected down here in this supposedly weather tight uh, outlet box here and again that does a good enough job of keeping rain off of it but it apparently didn't protect it from the from the moisture and such and the power supply ended up failing on it so that was a good thing. It was easy to diagnose when I came out here and saw that the base station was no longer functioning. But uh, I'm going to put a proper uh, weathertight enclosure on here with the actual power supply plugged in inside the uh, weathertight enclosure so that hopefully everything will be protected. And then I'll be able to move on to the work I want to do on the rover. So next step is to get this built and mount it back on the post. Thanks. So again, by having an accurate idea of the location of the base station, we're able to compare that to the instantaneous location readings that the GPS unit is receiving. And we know how much error there is and in what direction and to what degree. And it's a little more complicated than I'm describing it because it's figuring out the sources of those errors over how many satellites it sees, six or seven or whatever it might be at the moment. But it's able to uh, make that comparison, determine the correction factor, and then use that radio to transmit it out to whatever rovers or mobile equipment is in the area. And um, that's how it works. And that's what gets us within 
you know, maybe four or five centimeters of our location instead of a meter or so. This is a quick summary of how real-time kinematics works with mobile equipment. Suppose I want to run a GPS guided rover around my farm. So here, here's the farm and above our farm we have the atmosphere and then above the atmosphere there's space. How long ago somebody went and put a bunch of GPS satellites up there which do a really good job of keeping track of their location. So if we put a GPS receiver on our farm, we can get signals from those satellites that allow us to calculate our position here on the Earth. The only problem is the atmosphere is kind of a messy place. You have ionospheric disturbances, variations in air density, the satellite spacing, all these things can work together to turn that GPS signal into garbage. And so when we may be trying to find our location here at our base station, it might pop up over here, over here. If we sit there long enough, we can get a whole collection of data. And this data is randomly distributed. That's a benefit to us because we're able to use our RTK base station to do what's called a surveying in process. And the surveying in process, it's basically taking that randomized collection of data and finding the central point of all that noise. And that gives us a much more accurate estimate of our location. Now that we have a known accurate base station position, we can use that in further readings from the satellites. So let's bring our rover in now. Our rover also has a GPS receiver and it's got an RTK receiver to receive transmissions from the base station. So since we're both looking at the same part of the sky, we know that whatever error our base station is seeing when it gets its location, the rover is going to basically have the same error. It's looking at the same sky and the same satellites. Only now, our base station knows its actual location. It never moves. So it can figure out how far east or west the error is, as well as how far north and south. And whatever it's seeing there, the rover's going to be seeing the same errors again. So now the base station is able to figure out what it needs to do to correct for that north-south error and the east and west error, where it then transmits that correction data to the mobile equipment, which is able to apply the same corrections to its errors, and what you end up with is a continuously updated correction stream that keeps the rover on track going where it's supposed to go without wandering off the road.
heading over to install the newly set up GPS base station this morning. Um, I'm hoping I can get the rover running while there's still snow and ice on the ground. I'm curious to see how it might perform in wintry conditions. So we'll get this thing mounted on the pole and hopefully everything comes back up and works the way we want. Well, yesterday I was able to take the RTK base station and get it mounted on that post out there. And I was actually able to take the rover out and run some tests around the snow and slush. And it still works. It works pretty well. But there were a few hiccups and um, I learned a few things that we may want to address later. So I guess we'll look at that in the next video. But for now, thanks for hanging out with me. See you on the next one. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.